So now we're at the fuel lines here and um, what we've got is the sender for an 89 to 90 blazer and what usually comes on this is these uh, metric fittings okay and they have o-rings so it's just your standard uh, o-ring style fuel fitting right but what I did is I, I cut the cut that off with the little tube cutter there and uh, if you notice the tubing cutter has like a little ridge in there and I basically took the ridge on this fuel line and set that set that in there so that I could get the cutter right up against the uh, the very front face of that fitting so I could take advantage of all this uh, pipe what little pipe is here I just wanted to make sure I had as much to work with as possible so what I'm doing is since this is going to be a combination of uh, an old sender with with new uh, new fuel lines and, and obviously a, a, a converted engine 2004 and up or actually anything like 99 and up uh, GM um, I went with something a little bit more friendly so what you've got to do is make a push lock fitting and I'll, I'll uh, show you here in just a second but basically cut the uh, the head of that off and then um, there's a die okay and it comes in a kit that I'll show you here in a second but basically you set this uh, this tube in a die and then you get this guy right here and it's pushing it's pushing the tube up against the die and essentially what it does is it gives you a stop in the pipe there okay and now you've got a place to put your your push lock fittings on there now this is as good as uh, factory as it's going to get and um, so the tool is it's made by Mastercool it's kind of spendy um, part number 71475 and most of you guys probably have already heard of it and if you did it like I did I spent you know a number of hours contemplating if I wanted to get it or not I really am glad I got it because um, it's going to save me a lot of hassle and it's going to keep me from uh, from using any unions uh, that are made out of brass. The problem with brass and steel is that brass is really soft and that's what I've been using on my previous swaps. Um, and and brass is, so it, being that it's softer, it has a, it's, it's likely to break before the steel is. And so uh, we're just going to go ahead and move along with... Uh, with this new process here it's quite a bit of you know an investment to make uh, to get this uh, this flaring tool but in the long run it's going to save a ton of hassle and, and it's just going to come out with uh, cleaner results so I'm pretty happy with it and I just want to share with this with you guys and um, let's go ahead and uh, start by removing this fitting here let's see if I can do this it takes a little practice so we take that guy off there, and then I took the actual head of, of this cutter off because of the clearance between the three pipes there. Took that off, and what I'm going to do is, again, you see the, uh, the little ridge right there. So I want to put that towards, towards there. As long as that ridge lines up, then I'm pretty good. And then I'll take this. And I'll crank her down. Just make sure it's all lined up right. And then it's gonna take a little bit of just playing with this thing to, to get it to clear the, the spinning of this tool here. It looks like I got enough clearance there. Go ahead and start the cutting. And again, I'm just tightening the, the head there and then I'm taking this off. I'm just being careful not to not to bind any of these tubes up. This sender is pretty expensive. So I'll go ahead and get this cut off and then uh, show you the next process. this was a 3 8 put this back and then now we're working on these two smaller lines which is 5 16 put this 3 8 back here so you get, it all matches up you got 5 16 uh, dies and um, 
I guess it's a die set. So we'll go ahead and uh, take the yoke. This is only the second time I've done this, so it takes a little, a little finesse. So just gotta line this guy up like this. So it takes a couple hands to get it all together, but this guy right here's got to be flushed. This tube's got to be flushed with the face of this, which doesn't look like it is. Let's get that. Push back right there. Placement is key here, making sure that that guy's flush. So if I ruin this here on uh, on this video, at least there's proof that I did it, right? So anyway, there's the pipe flushed, and then the, uh, the appropriate other part of the die. We'll have to run this back a little bit to get it to fit. And then we screw it in so it meets the, uh, the other pipe, and that's pretty much locked in there. Now I'm going to twist this until it gives me enough pressure to, to basically stop turning. And once, once I get to a point where it's no longer going to hand tighten, then I, uh, this is already tight here. So then you close this guy right here and it's going to start to operate the little ram, the hydraulic ram in there. So let's see if we can get a shot of that. I'll get this down here so it's nice and stable. Can you see that? Okay, so it's already uh, reached the bottom. Go ahead and uh, start to disassemble it here. snug in there. Finish opening the, the port. Remove this die. And then hopefully, if everything's done right, you can open this guy up and have a push lock fitting. Tolerance is so tight right here. I'm gonna have to take this guy all the way out. I'm fighting for space because these three tubes are so close to one another. That, there it is. So that's the new push lock fitting. We went from the uh, the O-ring flare to that. So now we're on to the uh, the vapor port, and this will be the last one. We're just on the very edge. So we're uh, just had enough pipe to to get this one done. So pipes in there now, and the die is already clamped down. Now I'm just again twisting this guy until it stops at the very bottom. And then down here I'm shutting the valve and then operating the hydraulic ram. And you, you can see right here it's going to push. It's going to push the pipe internally there. And that's it, just set. And um, so this is the 3 8 line, and then we have two 5 16 Now on the back side of this, when this guy is clamping down, you can see it leaves just a tiny amount of burrs on the on the outside of the pipe, but it's not enough to, uh, to cause any problems. Um, 
And the sealing is not done on the back side here. It's all done on this front part where it's nice and smooth. And that part's being protected by the, uh, the die that's being pushed in there. So once you push, once you push this guy in there, the O-ring is making the seal right here. So highly recommend this kit. If you guys can, uh, can swing it, definitely get it. You'll be able to do your um, fuel lines. You can do the push lock connections. You could do some metric, which I don't think I'll ever use. So it's part of the kit that, here's your, your metric bubble kit right here. Um, the only thing I did differently is I got the, uh, the transmission cooler line. That's the die for it. And uh, basically all these are the uh, 45 degree double flare for your brake lines. And it goes all the way from 3 16 to quarter, 5 16 3 8 and half inch, which is pretty large. And then uh, these two are the, what I just finished cutting off is those uh, fuel lines that have the O-rings. It's 5 16 and 3 8 if you ever need to use it for that. So, all right guys, we'll have fun.